try that again. Hello, everyone. Sorry to start out having myself muted. Um, I am Faith Denison, a senior brand manager at My Amazon Guy. And with me today, I have Charles Wolf, one of our great account directors, and Ari Young, who's one of our creative team leads. So we got a lot of uh, knowledgeable experts, because we are, <laughs> on the podcast today. So, uh, lots of knowledge here. Uh, Jason's out sick, so let's wish him well. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So let's see. We have Charlie here, and he asks, should I run PPC on my only hero variation? I've heard conflicting advice on this. So that is an outstanding yes from me. Um, PPC, and it's always been my motto that you have to spend money to make money. And if this is your hero variation and it's already pretty good, then absolutely you should be running PPC on it. Because even with the organic sales, you want to make sure that you're maintaining that rank and PPC will assist you with that. Uh, Charles, Ari, you all got anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, my my first statement is going to be what what are the the other variations, right? Right. So yeah, so if it's question. if it's just a color variation, like let's say you're running a t-shirt, right? You've mm -hmm. got black, uh, white, and then green. White sells the best. Yeah, you're going to run a run only ads on the white because anybody that gets there is going to assume you have different colors. Why waste the money, right? But then let's say your variations are something a little bit different, um, where they actually I don't. I don't know, maybe you're looking at a 10 count or a 20 count of Keurig K-Pods, right? You may want to advertise mm -hmm. your hero more, but you're still going to want to advertise your other variation because now you're looking at a different demographic. Even though they're parented together, you have two different demographics that you want to make sure that you're hitting. Mm -hmm. yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely agree. So I uh, hope that answers your question. And then uh, if you're to kind of add on to this, uh, if you're looking to sell and scale, Helium 10 is having a conference. Uh, and we do have a $100 code here, uh, S3 Pack mm -hmm. Stephen Pope. I'll post it in the comments. And then if you want another way to kind of grow as well, we have a Brand Mastery Summit uh, link here for $5 or $7. Sorry, still, still less than you would pay for weekly PPC. Yeah. So, woo, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds awesome. Yep. All right. And then uh, going to go ahead and post the link for the $7 brand mastery summit as well. Yay. All right. Now, next question. All right. So this is from Yasin and he says, hi. Hi, Yasin. I'll, I'll totally take this, this question. Yeah. This is a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> I like this question. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kyle Joseph says, hello, hoping to become part of MAG someday. Awesome. Well, Yay! we would love to yeah. grow with you. would love to work with you. Um, if you go to our uh, LinkedIn, Stephen's LinkedIn, um, also check Indeed. We should have some postings up. There you go. <laughs> hey, I love how that just popped up. <laughs> All right. Karen asks, I did an inventory reorder, but maybe a little too late. I may go out of stock. Should I do all... <laughs> Sorry. Should I do all yeah. possible measures to prevent going out of stock, stopping PPC, making the main image be a bad one, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so I would start with that. Definitely descale PPC. Um, another thing I would recommend is raising your prices. Uh, just kind of discourage. Uh, nothing too crazy. Like if it's a fifteen dollar item, don't do a hundred or something. Maybe like I don't know twenty or so, just to kind of discourage people. Um, but yeah, definitely. I. I don't think you necessarily need to change the main image, but if you think it'll help, if it's already a good seller, then you can absolutely kind of dole down that main image as well. That hurts my soul. Pierce to the heart. See that. <laughs> Give me a minute. She's like, no, anything but the image. Give me a minute. <laughs> I'll put you. <laughs> Literally, my entire job is making images better. So it's just like yeah she's like how could you do this to me <laughs> all right heart right off the bat <laughs> i'm sorry you're like this is bad i'm leaving <laughs> yeah right it's a bye i'm signing off <laughs> all right josh kennedy said oh and this is a four-parter hey Ooh. i'm trying to find parentage but now three of the five listings say inactive out of stock while at the same time also saying 60 units are available when fulfilled by all cert filter circle is selected, it shows the wrong ASIN, correct skew, and thumbnail says no image available. 
when fulfilled by oh, oh when fulfilled by Amazon's filter circle. Okay, we already read that one, but no stock, uh, pretty much. And then I downloaded my category listings report before this issue happened. When I re-upload the rows from the report of the three products, it doesn't fix. Listings aren't yanked, check stranded inventory. All right. I deleted one of the ASINs that was showing incorrect ASIN, but it deleted the correct ASIN too. I also tried partial and full update. All right. Um, hmm. That's a tricky one because uh, if it's not stranded, if it's not yanked, and you've already tried flat file updates, I feel like, and I think I remember this question from last week too. So I hate to see that you're still dealing with this, Josh. I'm so sorry. Um, have you tried contacting Amazon? And I know that that's like the last thing we want to do. Uh, but I think at this point, we might want to check with Amazon to see if they can give us some further insight as to why, you know, that's um, showing the way that it is an active out of stock. Uh, Charles, do you, have you came across this issue before? Um, this is not something I've encountered. Uh, first thing is I, I thought it might be a hidden suppression where it's showing yeah. active, but it, it's not. And I have a link. Um, if you, if you go to YouTube, type in hidden suppression, uh, it'll pop up a wonderful Stephen Pope video. Um, it'll show you everything you need to know. There's, there's five main, main reasons that can cause that. Um, they're pretty quick fixes. Uh, first step would be check all of those. See if that's anything that could be causing the error. Second step create a case with seller support uh, and then go from there because they might be able to say, they might be able to pop something up that's not showing up on brand health or anything like that. Yeah. So that's, um, I'm going to also, uh, if, if this issue is not solved by next week either, um, I'll try to have a more in-depth answer for you, or I know we have another podcast on Friday as well. Uh, so we'll try to get an answer for it, like a more concrete answer to see if there are any other steps we can take outside of actually uh, contacting Amazon because everyone in the world knows how incredibly frustrating that is. So, <laughs> all right, next question here. When Midas asks, when selling in Canada, have you experimented using French and alt text and not Spanish? This is a great one. And I feel like <laughs> I am, <laughs> and I feel like I am a commandeering, commandeering <laughs> the podcast. Commandeering? Oh, I'm commandeering? <laughs> what kind of pirate are you? <laughs> Arr. Arr. So Charles, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so a hundred percent correct. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in Canada, uh, if if you're selling in Canada, any food, anything like that, the ingredients have to be in French and English. Um, mm -hmm. It's a huge when doing backend SEO work. Yes. It is a huge push to make sure that you have French keywords in your backend, not just your alt text, but also your search terms. Um, honestly, it couldn't even hurt to put them in the description depending on the product. Agreed. Yeah. And there are products where that is applicable. Uh, now, if you're selling something simple like a notepad, and I'm only using that as an example because I have one in front of me, but if you're selling something simple like a notepad, you might not want to use like a, two different languages, but absolutely what Charles said, alt text, SEO backend, way to go with that. Um, just because there are a lot of French speakers in Canada, you absolutely want to take advantage of that. All right, next question here. Um, I believe Karen had... All right. Yeah. So me intentional, uh, Karen, this is a follow up. Uh, they said, so me intentionally engineering my listing so that sales are reduced, therefore rankings drop. Is this better than keeping sales velocity going out of stock than just pick back up once the stock comes in? Uh, yes. So the number one thing you want to do on Amazon is not go out of stock because it's much easier uh, to regain that velocity as the listing is active and it's still indexing on keywords. Even if it's not got as many sales, it's still going to index. So it's better to kind of keep the listing up and active so you can still uh, gather that data than it is to um, for it to go out of stock. It goes back out and it'll be much harder to regain that ranking. Yeah, I mean, the, the two biggest things when you know that there might be a, a gap between your stock and your shipment coming in um, is going to be not turning your ads all the way off but slowing them down while also doing a gradual price increase. Um, you don't want to just jump your price way up one day. Um, you, you run a, a pretty high risk of having a high pricing error. That's mm -hmm. not something you want flagged on your account. So if you know, hey, three weeks going out, 
I might have a pricing error. What you can do is you can start maybe each week doing a price increase and hey, you might even get lucky and your sales velocity might not slow down while you're raising the price. Well, yeah, you're out of stock. But mm-hmm. You also just found out you can sell your product for $10 more. So. <laughs> so. Oh, that's good. And then I think that Karen had another part as well. Uh, they said, my tacos has been so good as of late and seeing the tacos worsen as a means to prevent going out of stock. It's just painful to see. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Honestly, you could just turn off PPC altogether. If we're already going to go the route where we're kind of uh, engineering the listing to not be as successful, uh, we can go ahead and turn PPC off in that case. Uh, that way you can kind of save a little bit, but that listing is still active um, and you're still getting that, not necessarily velocity, but you know, whenever you do have more stock coming in and you can update the listing to be beautiful like it was before, uh, like I said, it'll be much easier to regain that rank. All right. Hey, Edwin, uh, Janelle, and I hope I said that right. I'm sorry. It's not your name. It's me and my brain. So uh, (laughs) he asked, what's the best way to do a price increase after improving the quality of the product based on received reviews? Uh, the, what I would do here is I would go based off of your competitors. Uh, if you're priced, uh, and you know, there's a lot of things to consider here as well. So if you're a premium product, of course, you're going to go for a higher pricing. You wouldn't want to kind of lower yourself if you're in that niche and make people think, oh, it's cheaper. So it's lower quality. But on the flip side, if you have, um, not necessarily non-premium, just a regular product, Uh, I would keep the pricing within that range uh, that all your competitors have. I wouldn't go anywhere like a dollar or two above it just because pricing is one of the things that people will, of course, and especially in this economy, pricing is going to be one of the first things people look at. And depending on your product, this can make or break the conversion. So I would, um, long story short, uh, I think the best way to do the price increasing uh, is if you're going to do it that way, I would do it incrementally and like a dollar at a time. All right. Marissa says, hi, bestie. Hi, bestie. <laughs> Love her. Well, now I feel like a third wheel. Thanks. <laughs> I can thought I was your bestie. What? Hi. <laughs> <sighs> Drama oh. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy. Hello, Mitchell. Howdy. Howdy. All right. Next question. Eric, Eric Mendez asks, any recommendation for in- inventory financing for Amazon FBA sellers? Um, outside of the loans that Amazon offers to sellers, and I don't think they offer it to every seller, but whenever you first log into Seller Central, it'll say, oh, you are eligible for a loan up to X amount. Outside of that, I don't personally have any other recommendations. Charles, Ari, do you have any recommendations? Mine would be the same. Okay. Outside of Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that there are some, but... Um, I am, <laughs> I am not aware of them. So if anyone has any recommendations for Eric, go ahead and put them in the comments and we'll shout them out. Panhandling. Yes. <laughs> Karen says, thank you for you so much. Of course, Karen. Yay. <laughs> it's what we're here for every Tuesday. <laughs> I only answered the high question, but I'm helpful. <laughs> you are, you are so helpful. <laughs> All right, Mani and Nam. Is that Mani backwards? Mani and Nam? That's cool. It, 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 that's cool. Yeah. Hello, guys. I you are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Can you please tell me how to fix an ASIN that refuses to become a child? <laughs> it was a former child from another parent and seems to have saved the old information of the child. Yes. Mm. Um, you I take the back of your hands and you go like. <laughs> you said, <"That's> <laughs> I'm the adult here. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah. And after you do that, I would also check uh, that the category of the orphaned child ASIN still matches the parent ASIN. Because it may be a situation where Amazon's changed the browse node of the main parent. And that didn't necessarily translate to the child ASIN, which is why it broke away and why you can't add it back. Um, I would, if you haven't already, I would try to add it through a flat file as well. And if that doesn't work, then for sure, um, definitely check the category and make sure you can get that changed. All right. I remember flat files. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. My existence. <laughs> <laughs> when Ari started before she was a creative director, uh, she was working under me. And I said, 
I'm going to crack this whip and make you do all the flat files. So. <laughs> and that's so when she went to creative. Yeah, she said, I can't <laughs> handle faith. She's a big <laughs> Eric Mendez asks, how to remove hijackers from my listing with brand registry? All right, awesome. So you would just go to brandregistry.amazon.com. And since um, I'm in my personal account, I'm not going to show you, but I'll kind of go over the steps. Uh, you would go to protect, and it's at the top uh, bar there. Uh, and then report a violation. And then what you're going to want to do here, if you haven't made a test order yet, I would recommend that if um, that's within your budget. Uh, because having the test order definitely helps. Uh, you'll want to go ahead and input your ASIN into this tool, uh, select it, and then from there it'll show you all the sellers that are on that listing. Um, select the one that's the hijacker, which I assume that's only the one. <laughs> go ahead and select that one, and then uh, that'll help you file a case with Amazon. Now I do want to mention that I noticed lately that you need to be fully registered with USPTO in order uh, to do this option. So keep that in mind, but that is the process. Basically, short answer, brand registry, and then go to protect. For yeah, those who don't know what USPTO is, what, what is that? That's the, the US Patent Trademark Office. Um, ah, so basically, you need to have your trademark and you need to have all of your information at, ready when you fill that out because it's going to ask you for your ID number. Mm. Um, there are... I think there's a few options on there that you can report someone else. Like you can report a violation without having your trademark number. Uh, it's not as effective. Uh, mm -hmm. And then even then sometimes you have to also watch out for how many times you are reporting a seller. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you do what she said and, and it's great. Don't do it a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. It, it, it just, don't do it that many times. That's, Charles, there's a know. limit. Don't ask how I know this. <laughs> <laughs> so like under under 99, under 98. Yeah, 98.7, 98, like 98, 7, 98 degrees. 7? That's fine. What is What's a point seven, seven, seven for right? submitting? That <laughs> <laughs> it's like you fill it out, but don't like send you it. The process, mm. but right yeah. before you hit submit, you're like, mm, no. no. <laughs> seven. I don't think it's so. seven. I'm just going to back button. <laughs> Right. Manny says, thank you so much. Hope it will work. Fingers crossed for you, friend. Yes. <laughs> All right. And then Jaleel says, do keywords in your brand story have any ranking juice like they do in bullets, description, and alt text? Yes. Jaleel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so excited to see Jaleel. <laughs> like, Tammy I Moore. worked on the account. <laughs> Tammy Moyer asks, Hello, I was a recent applicant for a customer success position, and I'm glad to be able to come in today and learn more about the company and the services you offer. Glad to see this type of active engagement and assistance. Oh, yay. And we do this, too. Like, even though we work from home, uh, you know, we're honestly very social and active. Like, we, yeah. we don't always have video calls or anything like that because some of us are a little introverted. But, yeah, we, we definitely have, like, memes and stuff we send each other all the time. We're a very close-knit group. So, yeah, um, yeah good luck uh, on your application. <laughs> Look at that. Mag swag. <laughs> mag swag. I love the mag swag. I'm collecting. I also have uh, the hat. <laughs> yes. Wait, how do yeah, I get I a hat? What? You got to just be awesome, and then it just randomly shows up in your mailbox. Oh, I'm pretty see, sure. I'm, 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 not, I'm not awesome. I'm just okay. Yeah. Okay. You got to get pink hair. I see I'm 98.7. I'm not the full 100. I would have, I would be that 0.7th application. <laughs> <laughs> like I filled out the top half, but just didn't fill out the bottom half of the application. You know how fast I would hire you? So fast. <laughs> so fast. So fast. Just fill out half the application and done. <laughs> Kevin Hawthorne says, good evening from Lakeland, Florida. Well, good Yay. evening from Kentucky, New York, and Georgia. <laughs> I'm in New York. Yep. Hamza Ishak says, my brand registry dashboard doesn't show my registered brand. My seller central email is, other, is different than my brand registry email. What should I do? Mm. <laughs> oh, I was my favorite face to make today. Just oh. <laughs> Hmm. 
Your seller central email doesn't necessarily have to be the same as your brand registry email. However, from your brand registry email, you would want to add the other email as a user. That may be why the brand registry dashboard isn't showing your registered brand because your other email address, the seller central one needs to be added as a user. Mm. Yep. All right, uh, John Paul Vias, who works with us, I know that name. <laughs> adding ASIN to A plus content, getting an error. You are unable to add content to this ASIN because there is an existing retail contribution on this ASIN. Um, uh, I would check first that you don't have a Vendor Central account because a lot of times whenever that comes up and Vendor Central is um, kind of like the Seller Central beta. So it, it was out yeah. with Seller Central. A lot of people... It uh, had Vendor Central, and mostly it's just used for people who wholesale to Amazon or just wholesale in general. Uh, so I would first check for a Vendor Central, but if you're a newer seller and you know for a fact you do not have <laughs> um, Vendor Central, I would also check um, to see if anyone else has rights to these listings. So, you know, if you have an arbitrage item and you know there are other sellers, it's likely one of those sellers or even the main account for the arbitrage item itself may have that brand registry and that access and that retail contribution. So um, th that's definitely where I would start. See if there's a vendor central account, but if you know that that's definitely not the case, then I would also check other uh, sellers who have access to the brand um, and then maybe see if there's a main seller central account itself. All right, next question. Ooh, Kristen Dixon, our creative <laughs> director, the queen. Came in with the win. She said, I have some recommendations here. To fix the ASIN <laughs> parentage issue, one, file with Amazon to break the parentage. Two, update the child information to include correct brand and category. Three, use file feed to add the ASN to the desired parent. Absolutely, 100%. And um, I believe that was... Was that Meanie's question? I'm sorry. I know, like, you literally just <laughs> asked... <laughs> Oh. But uh, yeah, so that was, it was one of the questions we had earlier, um, Manny, according to Charles and me. So uh, I hope that helps Manny, but definitely let us know. All right. Yay. Next question. <laughs> Eric Mendez says, thanks, but the hijackers is using my listing in Canada. Ooh, and not USA where I have the trademark. All Ooh. right. Well, you will definitely need a trademark in Canada in that case. Um. And when you say hijacking the listing, are they on there like just as another seller or Charles, or are you laughing? <laughs> it said. It just died right. on me. <laughs> as I was saying, we need a brand registry in Canada in order to report the hijacker, unfortunately. So um, brand registry, of course, tied into a trademark in Canada. So, yeah, you would have to get that. But in the meantime, uh, in terms of hijacking, if you mean that they took over your listing and changed everything, um, file a case with seller support. I don't know how helpful they would be, though, if you don't have that brand registry. And I don't think it would be very helpful at all, unfortunately. So That's a bummer. <laughs> it is a bummer. And, and so, like, if you have... <laughs> Sorry, Tina. <laughs> If, she said if you, bummer. yeah, she said that's a bummer too. Yeah, um, so did. what, what you're going to be looking for is you're going to want to go to uh CIPO, C I P O. Uh, it'd be the equivalent of USPTO. Uh, you should be able to use all of the same information that you used in the USPTO with CIPO and it should actually help you expedite the process. I had a client that just did it. Um, it was a lot easier to get it in Canada once it was already done in the U S. Jaleel Penner says, hey, Ariel, <laughs> you can answer this one. <laughs> I can answer this one. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite clients right there. <laughs> oh, Manny uh, says, I want to know your opinion on the customer's behavior towards the new brand story model. On mobile, they barely see the modules, and I'm not sure if they will scroll horizontally. What are your experiences? All right, Charles, I'll let you answer this one. 
<laughs> my hand was up faster. I hit the buzzer quicker. No. I had a phone in my this. lap. <laughs> uh, no, Ari, you, you take it away and I'll follow up. No, you beat me to the hand raise. Fine. I don't need your pity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the biggest thing, uh, mine is not from a creative standpoint. Mine's from an SEO properties and the additions that a brand story adds to it even if it might not scroll horizontally or it might seem like it's a little bit compact on a mobile, you're still getting the same SEO properties, all the alt text, all your crawlable text that's going to come along with that, right? So even though it might not be visible, the actual brand story itself, the indexing that you're getting from that for your listing is still happening on a mobile and a desktop view. And that's not something you would want to pass up for just because it might look a little bit compact. Ari, right, did you want to add uh, to the creative portion of things since Charles had SEO covered? Yes, he definitely covered SEO. I'm trying to, my phone is being slow. I'm trying to pull up the age of Sage uh, brand story so you can see here. That's a great idea. Okay, so here is one of the age of Sage, like, sorry, trying to cover here. Here's one of the age of Sage listings. You look really close. So first thing that happens, especially on a mobile view, is you see the first listing details, but then it goes straight into showing those listing images again. And it's gonna show you a full image gallery of what you already have posted. So most people, they're not gonna be scrolling down all this way. And of course my phone decides, no, yep. you're done and showing. <laughs> yeah, phones are fun. Get back there, you silly. <laughs> And I can pull that up on my computer if you want. Um, that would be so much better. Computer as well. Yeah, I wasn't prepared to show this on my phone. <sighs> That's okay. I think that was a good example to actually see it how it is on the phone because even yeah. though the mobile view is like super accurate, uh, to actually see a phone in somebody's hand and like how that would look. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see it, actually if I can pull up the Age of Sage listing. That was a great idea. Yeah. Steven's like, why are y'all clicking on my listing and giving me all these PPC click charges? <laughs> I didn't click on the sponsored one. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, as you can see here, as Aria was saying, and I think she went over everything, but as you can see, mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of defaults here to that main image stack. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we got customers who also bought it. There it and is. Here's the brand story. Yeah, the A plus is always going to be under the brand story. So you can start like scrolling. So on mobile view, yeah, on mobile view, the, the brand story has its issues. Like it's not going to prompt really clearly to like scroll this way for more info. But if you got a lot of text there, it's going to like that, that does stand out. So it's kind of making you aware that's the A plus. It's making you aware that there is more information there. But um, sorry, you, I'm a boomer. No, you're, you're good. <laughs> so it's it's this part. You see how there's still like some information you can see right there. So if you scroll left, you start seeing the brand story in this carousel thing going on. Um, so it does give them a good access to go straight to your brand store. And it also looks good. I can't tell you like I am a shopper that I'm, I'm a shopaholic. I, I like Amazon and I just go through and I buy stuff that I really shouldn't get. But one thing that sells me is more pictures, giving me more graphics so I can see not only the product at different angles, but see the brand is really established, you know, that will help you with brand loyalty and it'll really help you or help your customers feel confident purchasing from you. So definitely take advantage of that. That's a fantastic answer, Ari. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, John, Paul, I think this was the first part of his question. I uploaded an image and it was saved at inventory, but it did not. Up oh, so it was saved in the back end. And then Amazon support came through and said, oh, this image was claimed by another representative. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely check uh, to see if there are any other sellers for that listing. Sure. Um, and then also, if, like I said, if it's an arbitrage item, I would also get in contact with the manufacturer to see if there's like a main seller central or vendor central account. All right, next question. Trying Jason to... said hello. There it is. Oh, Jason Mestre. <laughs> well, thanks for covering while I'm out, you lovely people. Jason, Anything I would literally you. die for you. This is the least I can do, and I hope you feel better soon. 
I'll fill in always. Yes. <laughs> Love you, Jason. Love Jason. <laughs> John Aspinall says three people. Well, <laughs> well right? This is the first time this has ever happened. Three. Yeah, yeah three, it's, it's and party. it's like the three coolest people. No. <laughs> The coolest people, yes. I have finally made it. My whole life, I've wanted to make it. And Same. I made it. <laughs> you <laughs> are. And <laughs> just in time to like show off your new tattoos, also. Oh, I oh, the whole meeting, I'm just in. going like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, look at my oh, tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Making me so just every time you're just like, I'll answer this question. Yeah, I, got oh, I, got, I got this one. But there's this one over here. <laughs> I need a tattoo. My first tattoo is probably going to be a mag tattoo. <laughs> I would love to see it. Manny, right? says, Manny says, thank you so much, guys. I'm having fun watching, and it's like talking to friends. Really cool podcast. And he sent us flowers. Thank <gasps> you. One of those for me? Yes. Yay. <laughs> of course they are. They are. Absolutely. They have to be. For all. <laughs> Facebook user <laughs> says... <laughs> What things you consider in the product when you're going to launch that product? Huh. How much time do you have? All right. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you two minutes to answer this, Charles. Crack your knuckles, show us the tats, and let's get going. Oh. Yes. <laughs> flex, flex, do, do the thing. Yes. What the, oh, that, that one? Yes. Right back there? That's a pretty one. Oh, like that um, one. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we got two minutes. Two minutes. I'm timing you. No, I'm not. Take all the time you need. <laughs> I'm okay. timing you. Because I think That's the fine. answer to this question Go. would be beneficial Ding. for other uh, viewers. So take sure. all yeah. the time you need. Um, it, it's simple. We we want to look at at a new listing going into going into launch on, on four prongs, right? Um, we want to make sure that catalog design, PPC, um, and SEO are all taken care of, right? So first is, is the product variation of anything? Um, do we want to have it on its own? Are there other variations that we want to put together? Um, is it in the right browse node? Everything from a catalog standpoint taken care of. That's the first thing. At the same time, you're going to want to start with your SEO. Um, so what we would do and how we would do it at MAG, uh, you're going to look at competitors, uh, get a list of any direct competitors. You'll use those competitors. If you use Helium 10, any other keyword research uh, engine that you can, it'll probably produce similar results. Uh, we just use Helium 10. There is a link to get a discount on Helium 10 if you scroll up to the top of the chat here. Uh, and Ariel. <laughs> uh, so what you're going to want to do is you've got your competitor research. Um, that's going to help you get what they're ranking for, keywords that they're using. Um, you can use that. You can rank those. Get your own keyword list going. That'll help you figure out what keywords you want to put on the back end. Starting out with phase one SEO um, is how we would do it here at MAG. It's what I would recommend. Starting out with the new listing, your top ranked keywords, you want to duplicate, right? You want to have them in your title. You want to have them in your bullet points. You want to have them in your search term. Uh, we have research that's shown that if you have a duplicated keyword, it's going to index quicker. Let those run for about 30 days after the product's launched. Go ahead. Then you can start kind of airing out, having them in one place using uh, further down ranking keywords to replace the duplication, stuff like that. Uh, next one, you'll want to start and set up some auto campaigns for the listing so that when you launch, those are starting. You can also use some of your very high ranking keywords, start with exact and broad phrase keywords, um, and you'll start, you can adjust the bids as you want. In addition to that, depending on how much money you have to throw behind your product launch, you're going to want to probably look into enrolling in Vine. Um, with Vine, I would really recommend looking into it and saying, okay, is this something that is going to be usable to anybody, right? Granted, a Vine reviewer does have to pick your product out, right? That also being said, if you're selling a cookie and you're like, damn, my peanut butter cookies are fire. Other people might not think that, right? That's subjective. That is a subjective product. Now, if you've got a t-shirt, and you're like, yeah, this t-shirt's hella comp, right? Put it in Vine because more than likely most people, that's objective. Most people are going to have a similar opinion about something being comfortable or something being useful or something being well-made. I would enroll it in Vine. Um, as that product get launched, uh, you also want to make sure you have A plus content, full image stack. So you're looking at about seven images plus a short video if you have the ability to. Um, you can also use your keyword ranked anywhere from 10 to 25. I would use those in your alt text. Um, and then also duplicate your top 10 ranking keywords, um, probably in the crawlable text for the A plus content. 
That's close to two minutes. That's a fantastic answer, Charles. And you that's, that. that's close to two. I think that's like two minutes and 10 seconds. <laughs> I was even timing you. I was like, this answer is so great. If it's five minutes, that's cool. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. Awesome. <laughs> And, Off the top. Yeah. and we said, Kyle, if you're looking to become a part of our team, you can apply here below. Yeah, it's us. right there on the screen. Join us. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you can be a podcast host. John yeah. Arsenal <laughs> says, would my ACOS decrease if Charles took off that Falcons jersey and put on a man's jersey? Hashtag Bill's not oh, Okay. Look, this, first off, this is a Matt Ryan jersey, like- Okay. <laughs> So Matt Ryan may not have won a whole lot of games, but statistically <laughs> speaking, we care about statistics here at the South. Okay? We do. Because the Falcons do suck. Um, but you didn't see me say that or anything. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Man, it's not, yeah. Love that. It's it so good. Thank you for the uh, insightful questions, John. <laughs> that was a good one. I know this whole all good. the all the this is on the IDS list. This is a problem. <laughs> okay. Next question. All right. Geraldine Garcia Queen says, Can you talk more about the honeymoon period for new sellers? Absolutely, we can. So the honeymoon period is essentially kind of like what it sounds, you know, whenever you just get in a new relationship and everything's awesome and you love everything. <laughs> kind of putting them before everyone. Amazon does that for you a little bit. So um, now they don't necessarily put you before everyone, but uh, there is, and if I had the exact algorithm, I would let you know, but as with everything, as with God, Amazon works in mysterious ways. So I'm not sure exactly how they're calculating this, but the honeymoon period, whenever you first launch a product, Amazon will kind of push it a little bit uh, to show up more in search results. Um, stuff like that, just to kind of give you some leeway, give you a little bit of a, a step up, if you will. Uh, Charles, you got anything to add to that? I mean, that's that's hitting the nail on the head. It's it's a bonus period where yeah. Amazon basically is like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna increase your visibility, we're gonna increase your traffic, we're gonna help you pick up a little bit of velocity while all of this new SEO, while all of these keywords you're putting in the back end are picking up speed, right? Um, it's basically just, it's like a booster shot. It's like yep. a, a kick in the butt, a can yeah, of well, That's a really good. good analogy for it. A little booster <laughs> shot, you know. <laughs> that's a much better analogy than I was thinking. I was like, okay, it's that boyfriend that you just start dating and then they become abusive a couple months later. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's a better one. Amazon, Amazon's abusive. And I'd be like, oh, yes, we'll help you out. Yeah. <laughs> I have the worst relationship with Amazon. Same. My most toxic relationship. Yes. All right. <laughs> Next question. All right. Manny says, Steven, since you were watching too, I think I came up with a great hack for the EBC content. I would love to share it with you since you have done so much for us. Oh, thank you, Manny. And I know Ariel would love to hear that too. As yes. our video, uh, team I'm all curious now. The ears are up. <laughs> the cat ears are up. leave me hanging like that. It's just like, no, I'm not going to give it to you right now. <laughs> he said, mm, you're going to wait till next week. Uh, Rana Navid Shamshir said, and I'm so sorry again, it's not your name, it's my brain. He says, hello from PPC team. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Yes. I3 says, first time shipping, using my supplier's freight forwarder, they quoted me 685 Ocean, 880 Fast Ocean uh, Air, 1865, all DDP, volume 6.4, uh, CFT and 540 pounds seems too cheap. Any mm-hmm. thoughts? Um, 6.4 cubic cubic feet, 540 pounds. What is it, like a, a dishwasher? Oh, there, it might be a pallet from the supplier. Yeah, but one dishwasher. pallet that much. Well, that like in my brain, like that's that's the size of it. Six feet by six feet by six feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, honestly, that's, I mean, that's super cheap. But like if you... If it's a reliable source and you, you know, you're not having any problems with them or you have somebody that can verify that that's a, a reliable freight provider, run it. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't really assist you on, I can't be like, yes, do this or don't do this mm-hmm. because I'm not a representative or manager of your brand. Uh, but that is a, 
should go prize. It's a good prize. <laughs> Just say that's that one you look at a little closely. Like, that's a good yeah, that's where I'm like, hey, hit me up in my DM. Let me know who did this. <laughs> okay. I'm just imagining people sliding into his DM. Just how about this price? You pay me six hundred dollars. I got another offer for you. See, that's right. Any recommendations for a new pro? Oh, Jaleel Pinner again says, any recommendations for a new product with a low budget, meaning that I'll also have to use really low bids, trying to utilize the honeymoon period, but the budget is 60 daily. Clicks are slow. Um, if clicks are slow, I would, um, so I think 60 daily is actually a pretty good budget for one product, to be honest. Um, I know that you said that was a low budget, but unless you're selling like a supplement or something that has probably a low budget. Uh, but for the average product, I think 60 a day is really good. And it's definitely a workable number. What I would do is I'm not sure what your PPC campaigns are looking like at the moment, but I would start out with, and this is the strategy I would use. I would start out with an auto campaign first. Um, if you have Helium 10, I would also do um, a little bit of keyword research. We do have an SEO course on our website. Um, but if you have Helium 10, I would recommend researching keywords from other competitors and making manual like a uh, broad or exact match campaigns. Those which should be separate campaigns, by the way. Sorry, I was kind of thinking of the strategy as I was saying it. Um, so I would create, I would at least start with those three campaigns a manual broad, a uh, manual exact, auto campaign. I would set the daily budget for each of those to 20 and then see what happens. Um, honestly, you might wanna put a little bit more of a budget on the, um, on the auto campaign, but with the manual campaign, you wanna be competitive with your bids, right? Uh, so I would say maybe 20 for each, maybe like take 15 for the auto and then like kind of allocate the others. But that's definitely a doable budget. I wish I had Enrique on here uh, to give like a more thorough strategy, but bare bones, that's exactly what I would do. All right. Uh, you have anything to add, Charles? You look no, like no, I'm reading a question. Oh, okay. Uh, got it. Hey, <laughs> no skipping ahead. <laughs> no it's skipping just, ahead. I'm skipping behind. Oh, okay. okay. That's different. Okay. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> All right. I feel like that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Ozier Malik says, is the MAG course on SEO good? Yes. And I'm not Terrible. <laughs> and we're all at mag-com. Oh. <laughs> Spider-Man would take the SEO course. Why shouldn't you? Fact. I just explained in a very, very short, detailed response on how we would fully bake a listing right for just just phase one right and mm -hmm. that that's that's phase zero going into phase one right there are three other phases two three four right this is this is a process that that course literally will give you a baseline understanding of what you need to know and how you need to operate your seo for your individual listings on a consistent basis right this is not a one and done type deal Right. This is something yeah, you that you're doing. It. Yeah. This is something that you're going to be doing on a repetitive every three to four week cycle, right? That course lays down the foundation and the groundwork for you to understand how, how we mm -hmm. have accomplished it and how we grow our client sales using that framework. Yeah. And it's really good to take it really at like any education level, whether you're like an expert in Amazon already, or if you're coming in as a beginner, I've had interns who have absolutely no Amazon experience go take a course and they're coming back to me with questions that I can't answer. <laughs> and I, I, I send them to someone else in the company. And I'm like, geez, I got to take that course. <laughs> I've been so focused on creative for so long. I'm like, oh, dang. But yeah, it's a great refresher for people who have been in it for a while. And then it's also really good for, for new people as well. Oh, you got, you got, you pull my question up. This and the next one. Osman Sinar says, what's the recommendation for a gun related seller? Charles, you look like you were hyped to answer this one. I am. I'm from the South. I <laughs> he said that I'm from Georgia. Of course I am. Yeah, yeah, hence my <laughs> Falcons jersey. Yeah, um, it depends on what it, it really also, it's, it's going to be a huge thing as to what marketplace you're selling in, right? Um, if you were selling in other marketplaces, Europe, Australia, the, the rules and regulations as to what you can say 
what images you can have are, are a lot different. In the United States, it is very, very strict, right? So if mm -hmm. let's say, let's say you're, you can't really sell like a hammer or anything like that. You, you can't sell firing pins or anything like that. Um, let's say you're selling a scope, um, you're selling a new grip, you're selling pins, any other attachment of that nature. Um, advertise it, but only, only mention what the product is, right? And, and your goal here is anybody, like let's say I'm looking for, I don't know, uh, a red dot scope or any other regular scope. I can use just the word scope, right? That's mm -hmm. a pretty high ranking search term. I can, I can use words that describe just what the product is um, and the size based off of what size rail that attachment is going to fit onto, like what size mm -hmm. screws, what size attachment, what, uh, the rail it's going to fit on. I know what I'm searching for, right? So you basically would say everything that a buyer would need to know about it without mm -hmm. ever sell it, saying what it's for, because anybody mm -hmm. that wants to buy it knows what it's for. Hmm, that's interesting. Would it be the sim similar of, because I, I don't know gun products, but would it be similar if it was, say, like the mount for the back of a monitor? It's spelling that mount without using the word monitor? Yep. Is that kind that's of what exactly you're what it is. Oh, 100%. Okay. So a lot of attachments on firearms, actually, and this is something that I have have a lot of personal people ask me, just, again, I live in South Georgia, so... <laughs> uh, and it's, it's a common, it's a common question, but it's like, you can't say, Hey, this goes on this type of rifle or this fits these type of shotguns. It's like, you, you can't say that it's going to get flagged. Your listing is going to get taken down. You can't have a picture of somebody holding a gun on Amazon. Also yeah. going to get flagged and taken down. But what you can say is mountable scope or, or mountable that fits on a rail this size. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're avoiding all of the like main words. Um, and then from an image, and even then I'm going to be honest with you, even then you, you run a risk, mm -hmm. you, you, yeah. you, you run a pretty high risk of having some issues with that listing. Yeah. Especially whenever it comes to uh, talking about the compatibility with it. So like with a lot of things, you know, you can get by with saying, yeah, this is compatible with a, an iMac or whatever, as long as it mm -hmm. has that magic word compatible with replacement for, however, with gun parts, you cannot do that. Yep. Um, because that will trigger Amazon's flag no matter what, uh, where it is a gun accessory and because of those aforementioned strict laws in the United States. So you would have to be really careful with like uh, your technical information because you can say oh, it's a Glock, something or other. Sorry, I don't know my gun parts, but you can't say that. Um, <laughs> can I share my screen? Yes. Do you have an Amazon listing prepared? I do. I have a full bunch of them. He, he said, <laughs> I, have I, got a, I got a whole bunch of them up. He has receipts. He is ready. <laughs> so first off, I would love to take the podcast's opportunity to mention a new kind of deal that's been going out on Amazon. Anybody that doesn't know, when you pull up a listing page, Amazon's now showcasing the full image stack from the search page. Um, so when you pull up, you can actually focus through and look at all of the image stack Very while nice. on your search page. Um, so as you can see with any of these, they say 100% what it is, right? Um, if I go into any of these listings, I'll be able to find out what this size is. This is also adjustable, as you can see here, which means it'll fit on any size rail. Um, so you can get by with this. What you can't do is have this attached on an actual firearm. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're selling parts like this, that's okay. Uh, when mm -hmm. you start getting into like actual parts that go in for the creation or building of a firearm, I would never recommend that because Amazon's going to shut it down very very quickly we used to be able to get away with having like the gun grayed out kind of you know where it was a lighter transparency and then just highlighting that part and less and less we're getting away with that yeah mm -hmm. awesome so next question uh janowski 2 2012 says what is the best way to increase the price on a product after making improvements based on customer review oh i think we already answered this earlier uh, similar yeah, question yeah similar question basically uh check your competitors make sure your pricing is matching them um and then as you do your increments make sure you'll only do them in increments of like a dollar or so because if you uh try to raise your price too much too fast amazon will hit you with that high pricing alert which uh 
I feel like I should go ahead and mention this as well as uh, the resident Amazon expert. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you have uh, your product listed on anything else, Walmart, uh, eBay, your website, anything, that price has to match Amazon's or be higher because uh, Amazon are all about offering the lowest prices or at least matched prices. So uh, the price has to be lower or equivalent um, on Amazon as it is on another website, if that makes sense. I think I just jumbled my words. Basically, uh, high price can be bad if it is um, priced too high at once and a uh, low price can be bad if it's listed um, or high price can be bad if it's listed at a lower price on another website. Got that. That was, a, <laughs> for some reason, that was hard for me to say. And I have a sneaky recommendation. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Disclaimer, we're being sneaky. Uh -oh. Hey, hey, I am all for some sneaky stuff, right? <laughs> So oh, let's say you heard yeah. it here first. Folks. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, who would have thunk? So if you want to raise your price, right? What's how do you feel about coupons? Right? Raise your price. Raise it two, three bucks. Throw a coupon. Right? Let the coupon run for about a week. Uh, it'll get people accustomed to seeing your price. It'll also allow you during that coupon period to have your price less than your competitors, right? So that coupon runs, you're now showing customers that this product is actually worth a higher dollar value, but you're offering them a discount because you're trying to increase sales, right? So that's a win-win. Yeah. It. And then also when the coupon runs out, then the price is higher. You can also track your coupon results, you can set a budget. Um, so it'll show you, kind of give you a little bit of a buffer to see if people are really deterred from looking at a higher price point. Mm. That's not sneaky, that's smart. <laughs> All right, What's the difference between sneaky and smart? There is one. <laughs> that's why you're a Slytherin, I would say, Harry Potter. Oh, I am. <laughs> oh, I am. I have all the way. This one to no one. Every right. test I've taken, straight Slytherin. I always get <laughs> Hufflepuff. <laughs> really? That's yeah, like now, the coolest one. That's like the we get to, cool one. Before we get to Edgar's question, which Edgar is a client of mine, love him. So, and Ari, this question is directed at you, so you better give him the best answer. But one time I took a part quiz and it gave me a choice between Hufflepuff and Slytherin. So I don't know what that says about my personality, but you're right you in go. between us. Right in between. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is the perfect trio. We that is the trio. you have a Hufflepuff, a Slytherin, and a hybrid. Yep. <laughs> so, Fire. so Edgar asks, Ari, should I invest my creative budget in updating the quality of my existing photos or adding videos, assuming I can't do both? <gasps> can't do both? Dang, that's not a fair choice. But no, yeah, I would definitely invest in the video or the photo because you get, <laughs> yeah, I just, I photos first. And then you can always like do the video as a slideshow of until you can then budget to do the video later if you wanted to do a really like nice high end video. So you can always have a filler kind of slideshow one. You can still get your point across, get your message to the customer and still give them the different angles and the different lifestyles that maybe you weren't able to fist in the listing, the image stack. But I would definitely invest in really good quality image stack that that's going to sell your product for you. That was an awesome answer. answer. Sure. Thank you for taking care of Edgar. <laughs> yes. I'd never do you wrong, Edgar. I got you. She got you. We got you. <laughs> Hungry Turk says, what do you think about off out of stock during launch honeymoon phase? Because we have that problem with some ASINs. Rankings are now broke. Hold on. Oh, you mean like keeping your listing um, off out of stock until it's ready to go? That's how I'm reading it. I That's what sure. I was thinking. Okay. Or right, does I want to he sure mean that I'm interpreting this question right? Sometimes me and Jason read questions and I read it one way and he reads it the other. So I want to make sure that any way this question could be taken is answered. So um, I am assuming you mean so the product's listed on Amazon, uh, but you just have it turned off out of stock until it's ready. Um, and then you said, we have a problem with some rate A sense that the rankings are now broke. Uh, so I'm thinking too, that you might've had 
a listing that when I was stalking, you're kind of wanting to relaunch the honeymoon phase. That's kind of how I'm reading this question. So kind of a two parter. If I'm wrong, let me know. But we do only have five minutes left. So I'm going to try to get through this one and the rest as fast as I can. Uh, so uh, I would recommend during the honeymoon phase, definitely setting um, a launch date. So the, the way that'll look in the back end is it's going to say offer start date. And then you'll just want to select that uh, to whenever you think everything's ready. Uh, everything being ready would be SEO on the listing, making sure you have a full image stack, A plus content, and then PPC campaigns. Um, all of that too will also help with the rankings. Um, that you mentioned were broke. So I hope that answered your question, but let me make sure I can get to these others too. Um, all right, next one. I tried to create a new listing and it looks like some of the options, and this is from Maz Abdul, have changed. Which dates do I need to set to the future to preserve honeymoon period before launching? Thanks. So what I do uh, whenever I'm not quite sure, um, what, like when I'm going to launch it, uh, like I'm kind of waiting, like I'm playing a waiting game with a supplier or whatever. What I do is I just put it a couple months ahead because you can go back and change this anytime. So if you know that something's coming in the next two months, but you want to go ahead and get everything ready on Amazon, absolutely fair. You can go ahead and set that to December 31st. You're good to go. And then, you, and then of course, you can always change it later. Boxer says, what a sneaky guy. You a sneaky guy. Hey. Hey. Boxer says, when do you can decide a product's not profitable is, or is not worth continuing? <laughs> you want to answer that, Charles? You look My like mic's you... on the other side. I was about to be like, nope. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, his, his name has made me upset because I haven't been able to go to the gym oh, in like a week. Yeah, I can't because all of this is new. And yeah, I just showed them off again, but it's all new. So like, it's all swollen. Um, no. And, and so there's, honestly, it's, it's hard. I have clients ask me, um, you know, not consistently, but it's a question that I've been asked before is, is when do I just throw in the towel? Right. When do I say, all right, there, there's no, there's no point in getting back up. I just got to go ahead and take the bell. Um, so that is up to you. Um, how much inventory you have left? How many options have you tried? Because there's a bunch of different options. Uh, how low can you go on the price while still maintaining uh, some type of margin? And is there any mm -hmm. way that like, let's say you're selling a $20 product, right? Your, your margin, your lowest you can go is $15, right? That's, you, that's your break even point. You're not selling anything. You're not moving anything. You're hitting all the right keywords, but you're just getting out beat by your competitors. You don't have a lot of reviews. You, you don't have a good BSR or whatever. So what you would want to do, drop that price down to $15, try to undercut your competition, right? See if you can get enough ranking, see if you can get enough traction, some good reviews to get that product moving. Then once that product's moving, then the question is, is this worth reinvesting in and trying mm -hmm. to raise the price now that I have traction, now that I have ranking, now that I have reviews. Mm -hmm. If not, and you're like, no, there's a better investment over here that's more profitable. Okay, cut cut your ties. Get a price to where you're at a break even point, turn it into passive income. Just help it to break even, let it go, put your focus somewhere else. Great answer. <laughs> that is a really good answer. Well done. <laughs> I'm a uh, sucker though. Science, whenever guys, I hear all information is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Boxer says just join, but super beneficial questions, everyone. This must have been an older one because I know we got some of his others. Thank you. And then Yay. the next one is a sneaky guy. Oh, it's I was doing a mag internship. Can you please give me some suggestions on what criteria Mag is hiring? Uh, so you know we're big on education. I would recommend taking uh, some Mag School courses if you haven't already, uh, but enroll, uh, enroll. Uh, but, uh, uh, where we are really huge on education, we don't, you know, we're not like, oh, you need to have all this course knowledge before you apply because we will teach you as you go. Um, if we, uh, you know, look at your application, your resume, we're like, oh, yeah, we could see them kind of being a good fit for us, you know, they got stuff to do. So, all right, mm -hmm. next question. Oh, oh for also with the, applying oh. with the sorry, Faith, with the applying with like intern positions and stuff, I, I definitely have seen like a lot of the back end with specifically with hiring oh. for like design interns. I'm not involved in all of it, but 
drop us a good cover letter. Don't just submit us a resume and like have us guess what you're going for or what you're passionate about. Yes. <laughs> drop us a cover letter. Talk about your passions. Talk about like where you're most educated in or where you want to grow to, you know, give us some feedback of what are you hoping to get from us? Where do you see yourself advancing with an internship with us? So the more information you give us, the more your resume is going to stand out because we're getting a lot of resumes. So definitely <laughs> tell us more about yourself as well. That was an awesome answer, Ari. Thank you. You are a queen. <laughs> All I right. love reading applications. I'm just like, oh, hello, who are you? <laughs> and Boxer's like, great answer. Thank you so much. Thank you, King. Yay. Blaine says, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. He had oh, a question about that. ICAP. You are sneaky, Charles. You're sneaky, Charles. <laughs> That's okay. I think on a, at least a weekly basis, I have a client that asked me something, and I'm like, here is your normal answer. Here's here my is Charles. what I would do. <laughs> just slide it in there. A boxer says, I'm not super great at PPC, but if I took the courses, would Mag take on apprentices? I'd love to get hands-on experience, even if I didn't get paid. Ooh. Well, well, now we are a fair company, and we would pay for an internship. Yeah, and honestly... We're offering them in all different fields. Uh, we're taking <laughs> brand management interns right now, um, so we can hire anything from a brand manager. We also, if you have some Amazon experience, but not a lot of Mag experience, uh, we are also hiring junior brand managers. It's something that we need right now. Uh, I've posted, uh, I think right above you is the myamazonguy.com jobs. Yep, the link's right there. Uh, please put in your application. Uh, I am an account director here right now. Um, hey, Charles, I, thank you. I could not tell you enough about how much I love Mag and how much I've grown in the year that I've been here. Um, mm -hmm. If you have a basic understanding of, my, of Amazon, and you also have a great work, at, work ethic, this is a place for you. We have an Agreed. amazing culture here. Drop your link. Right there. Agreed. Right there. Right there. Right there. Click it. Right there. Click it. Right there. Click it. Click it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's see. I think we start we... screaming at our viewers. Click the button. Amazonguide.com. Let's see. Oh, yeah. We're at time here. I do oh. think that uh, I saw a question from someone who asked about the ICAP, the ICAP marketing funnel graphic. I will post that on my LinkedIn later today, uh, Faith Dennison. Um, if it looks a little bare, it's because I am an anti-social media person despite being on this podcast. <laughs> but for the sake of the podcast, I will uh, post this graph. Oh yeah, that's the question. Great show, do you have that ICAP graphic? I... Yeah, so I will post that on my LinkedIn if you wanna check it out. That's the YouTube link. Oh, and Edgar, we have ah. one more. Edgar said, where's the cat? He's talking about <gasps> Annabelle. Uh, she decided to not co-host with us today, Edgar. Isn't that rude? What? Such she a cat. show up to our meeting tomorrow. No, 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 no for her. <laughs> where's Jasper? He's... Where is Jasper? Ari has a cat too, Edgar. He's, he's actually... He's actually Jasper. sneaking behind the couch, nom, right, nom. the couch right now. Don't you get him started. <laughs> if he starts meowing like crazy, I swear to God. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, to close out here, I'm going to go to, or I'm going to share my screen because I want you to visit my Amazon guy .com, mm -hmm. But I don't want to be a hypocrite and not, uh, you know, see it myself. So we'll share a screen it's such here. Such a pretty website. I love it. It is. Check this out. Look at Steven. Look at Steven. Steven. He oh, said, how can I serve you? He is ready to help you grow these sales. <laughs> That's why he has, again, the code for Helium 10. There is a scale and sale summit. Sell and scale, actually. Uh, checks notes. Sell and scale summit. <laughs> uh, scale, careers, scale, scale. Uh, for those who are asking yeah. about internships, um, or anything oh, like that, you can review. find that here. Uh, our Mag School courses, this redirects to magschool.com, and we have all kinds of courses, including our brand new reinstatements course. And if you just want some one on one coaching, you got Jason who's here. He, he won't be able to coach though, he's sick. But you know, we do have <laughs> Matt, Steven, Francisco, if you're Spanish speaking. Uh, Saban, who is head of our troubleshooting team. And then if you want a free call with John just to say, hey, <laughs> you want a free call with John, you can have that as well. So I want to be on there. How do right? I on I'm there? gonna book a call with John and just be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone go book up John's calendar. <laughs> yes, spam his calendar and be yeah, like, no, no, no. Call everybody <laughs> take John's 10-minute meeting, and then when you book it. 
just make the entire 10 meetings about how much the bills suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really funny revenge. I like that. Please. <laughs> so. I also love that he's the only one that has a background in this. I'm going to like give him heck for that. Like, excuse me, consistency. Why does everyone else have a blue background and you got this fancy high rise thing going on? <laughs> yeah, John's, John's going to hate us after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love his pose. Look at that pose. It's so distinguished with the glasses and everything. I love it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This was a really great podcast today. I had a lot of fun answering your questions and we will be here again, same time next week. So check us out then. Bye. 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 <laughs>